Joining me from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange is the CEO of Fibria, Marcelo Castilli. Good to see you. Good to see you too. So you are in a very interesting business at a very interesting time with operations in a troubled country, quite frankly. How are you able to do so well when you have so many subsidiaries in Brazil, which is deep, deep in a recession? The, the first fundamental difference uh, between Fibre and the other kind of companies that you are saying that we are a net exporter. You know, we export 90% of our production. Despite we operate from Brazil, we are not uh, delivering the products to Brazil. So that's a, diff a big difference from the others. It means that uh, we are not exposed with that uh, domestic consumption. And you would also then be very helped by the weakening currency. Absolutely, we are uh, helps in, in our favor. I mean, uh, but uh, I would like to address that uh, we have been doing a very big homework in our company, deleveraging the company, uh, getting back the investment grade, and preparing the company for the new growth cycle. And of course, right now with this uh, depreciation in real currency helps a lot, like a tailwind, uh, and, and uh, helping to maximize the company's results. So where are you seeing strength in your end markets? What are your best opportunities for growth as we head into 2016? 2016 for us represents that uh, we still uh, see the market balanced, not only this year, but the next year. Uh, the China or the Asia demand is still there, despite this China soft land. Uh, the household consumption will support the demand of such a product like tissue papers that we are uh, connected with. So looking at your numbers in the last quarter, you had a decline in earnings, but your gross margins improved. They've continued to improve for quarter after quarter. Does that trend continue now in the current quarter and beyond? Absolutely. Uh, this is the market consensus as well. We are not uh, able to do guidance, uh, but uh, the market consensus uh, uh, point that Fibra will continues to strength uh, the, our, our numbers and our results and our margins because the last quarter that is public, uh, the FX, the average FX was 3.50 something and the nowadays we have a three, more than 3.8. So continues improving, more to come. You mentioned China. Are there any markets in particular that are not doing so well that you are a little bit concerned about? Uh, frankly, it's interesting to say that uh, no. The answer is no. All markets that we participate, North America is doing well. As you know, Europeans surprisingly doing good doing good despite the concerns about the European uh, uh, macroeconomic conditions are okay. But the, 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 the big engine that drives demand is, is China, is the whole Asia. Tell me a little bit about some plans within the company. Are you looking to expand? Is M&A something that's uh, in your pipeline in the future? As we did our home, uh, homework, you know, the company is ready for several options to create value to the shareholders. So, we believe in consolidation in, uh, in, uh, as, a, as a, a path of this industry, so we have prepared the company to consolidate, but we are growing organically right now. We have announced one a big expansion project that will uh, increase 35% 30 of our pulp capacity and lowering the cost of the company. So it's move on and a predict to start up until the last quarter of 2017. So we have a possibilities. Uh, uh, consolidation, M&A, organic growth, and pay, paying back dividends to shareholders, that is a reality. We have announced that 2 billion uh, reais of uh, extra dividends uh, to be paid until the end of the year. That represents uh, something about 560 or 520 million dollars. Marcelo Castelli, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much.